very much to admit, welcome relief to get out of Westminster and uh, come here to a, a lovely atmosphere. It's not so much a nice atmosphere in Parliament at the moment. I left the lobby and there was four separate groups of Tories huddling around each other, talking about the Prime Minister, talking about the deal. They are in crisis and it is wonderful. <laughs> Are are necessary in keeping our morale high, in grounding ourselves in our political objectives and providing each other with strength to continue to move forward to achieve those aims. And whilst everybody is utterly obsessed with Brexit, and there is cause for that fixation, there is a drowning out of all of the other social issues facing our class. And I don't have to tell you in this room what is happening to working class communities up and down this country. But not only do we see our sisters and brothers plunged into the indignity of poverty every single day which sees, uh, by a system which sees exploitation and greed as acceptable, we see a concerted attempt to position a man of peace and principle in Jeremy Corbyn as a national threat. An attempt to weaken their weaken our spirit and our purpose, they drag us all in for good measure. And I have a really simple vision, it's probably the vision that you all share, it's rooted in the knowledge that the current economic and social model we exist within is unfit, completely unfit, to meet the challenges of our time. It does not service, in fact, it destroys the ability to meet natural human needs. It's a system which alienates us from ourselves. We wish for connection with one another, don't we? But our neighbours are turned into enemies. We want to feel safe and warm in homes, but that system insists that profit must come first. We want to move freely across our nation and the world, but lines are drawn to protect the powerful. Control over our own lives is out of bounds and war becomes inevitable. And I want us to, to imagine just for one minute what a defeat of Jeremy Corbyn would look like, what the consequences would be. And in light of that, I want to convey in the strongest possible terms why our primary political focus as a movement should be ensuring that Jeremy Corbyn leads a socialist-led government into power. Jeremy and the arguments for socialism that he represents have been under a concerted attack, haven't they, since he came into office. Not because they think that he's been a useless leader, not at all, but, but because in fact the political tradition that he represents, that socialism, it speaks to all of the issues of our time. There have been concerted efforts inside of Parliament as well as out to remove him from, from power. Because he, alongside the leadership and the movement that we are involved in, are proposing a radical reshaping of our system, as we know. And there are millions and millions of people who are mobilised and excited by that project. Because if you're sitting in a darkened room, and it's dark because you can't afford to light it, if you're hungry because you've given your food to your child but you can't eat yourself, if you're one of the Windrush generation who's fearful of deportation or a factory worker battered, battered down by a conglomerate who you are expendable to, the world is a scary place now, right now. right now and change cannot come quick enough. So beneath the Brexit chaos there is another story of suffering and the decimation of our public services which are democratically accountable and might address that suffering. And so that's what they do, they smear and denigrate Jeremy and our movement because we have everything to gain and those who benefit so grossly from the status quo have everything to lose. It is our moral and political imperative, is it not, sisters and brothers, to stay focused in unity and sustain our activism because there, in our activism and in our unity, we are completely unbeatable. And they know that. Because to be beaten is unthinkable. 
It would set our socialist vision back a generation or more. And I am not prepared to let that happen. I'm not prepared for the blood, sweat and tears of comrades in this room, those who have sadly died before they have seen our vision realised to be wasted because we felt like the political challenge was too heavy or the struggle was too difficult. There is a generation, a generation of young people prepared to strike for better wages at McDonald's. How uplifting, how inspiring. climate change catastrophe over the hill and they're not prepared to wait for tomorrow for change. There are people who are gagging for a better system and they know what we have now is not enough and they should inspire us all, shouldn't they, to do more because we can't go on the way that we have. I'm not prepared for one more person to die yes. when they have been prepared, they've been declared fit for work. I'm not any longer to sit in front of people grown adults who have been brought to their knees by the Department for Work and Pensions, not prepared to see older women forced back into work because they have been denied their pensions and I am not able to stomach no more in the fifth richest country in this nation that there are children going to bed without any food in their belly and therefore comrades and friends it is our duty is it not to do everything we can everything within our power to make the case for a different society country and world wherever we can whether that's in the supermarket queue whether that's online offline uh, we make the clear case and state quite clearly that we won't shut up we won't go away we won't be scared or intimidated but we will carry on with our cause and in government I will make my contribution to this movement by establishing a Ministry of Labour. By the way, Jeremy doesn't like the name Ministry of Labour, so if you've got any better names for the Parliament, that, that would be fine. But the principle of that ministry will be to secure, once and for all, a fundamental transfer of power from the employer to the worker. That's that for too long rights have been stripped away, worker confidence ground down and so we must write into legislation that workers shall have the opportunity by sector to collectively determine their own pay and conditions. The Ministry alongside unions must respond to low worker confidence in, its, in effect and change and open up access to the workplace for trade unions. It must make rights a reality bring them into fruition through a labour inspectorate. It must work to eradicate exploitation and have full employment as its inspiration. And of course, as John said, we will repeal all of the anti-trade union legislation. <laughs> protections and power in the hostile workplaces and it's about time, isn't it? We must put an end to the normalisation of precarious, low paid and short term working practices which have come to characterise work today. I literally cannot wait to establish that ministry. But, but I'm sure you know, work workers can't either, but the movement cannot wait for it to come into being either. And therefore, I am in solidarity with the brave women and men taking industrial action as we speak against their employer to force change. They're not waiting for somebody to gift them their rights, they are forcing that change. And we should follow them. Follow them in trying to create the world that we wish to see. To do that, we have a movement. We have to be active like we've never been active before. We have to support the wonderful activist groups outside of Parliament, the People's Assembly, DPAC, anti-racism campaign, anti-war groups. Let us support workers on strike and be present at picket lines alongside them. If now is not the time to force 
change. Comrades, when is the time? This cannot become our wasted opportunity, but the moment of our opportunity. When we stand up proud, proud and united, and take control. Thank you very much.